Hey guys, welcome back to another diecast review. This is the Auto Art 118 scale 2016 Ford GT that competed in the GTE LM class in the IMSA WeatherTech Championship as well as the WEC. This specific car is the number 66 car that competed in the 24 Hours of Le Mans where it finished 4th in class. Now be sure to hit the like button as we unbox this sucker. Under this cardboard flap here is obviously going to be the body panels, but let's pull off the styrofoam. And there she is. Certainly looks pretty good from here, but I am going to take it off the styrofoam base here and we'll get a better look. As usual, AutoArt did a beautiful job making this model and the packaging was excellent as well. There are actually several different die-cast manufacturers that make the Ford GT, but I went with AutoArt because of the removable body panels and opening doors. To be honest with you, I think I would have preferred the Castro liveried car that competed in the 2019 Rolex 24 Hours of Daytona, but this is the one that I got. What really draws me to the car is the complex aerodynamics and the overall stunning appearance. Because the car is so low, it gives the illusion that it is wider than it really is. Though at nearly 82 inches, it is still a very wide car. Of course, the most striking design feature has to be this open channel just past the door as it allows the air to flow towards the center of the car at the back. And I suspect this aids the efficiency of the rear wing, the rear diffuser, and the car's overall drag coefficient. The front of the car has a very thin splitter and large ducting for the radiator and brake cooling ducts. This panel here is removable and it's just held on by a couple of magnets and it covers the brake and clutch fluid reservoirs. Now I really like the huge extraction ducts for hot air passing through the radiator. It also lets you see just how steep of an angle the radiator was mounted. There's also a couple of canard winglets for additional front downforce. The door opening is very unique and I am impressed that AutoArt was able to achieve this function without being too bulky. I believe the doors are made of plastic to keep the weight down, allowing the doors to stay open. Now be gentle when you're closing the doors as it does feel quite fragile. The interior is highly detailed. It is very closed in, which unfortunately makes it hard to see on camera, but in person you can see all the details in the steering wheel, the dash, and even the pedals. Designed into the rear fenders are these large scoops covered by a perforated grill, which I assume are inlets for the intercoolers. There's also the nice detail of the exhaust pipes, which can be found on both sides. The engine cover is also removable. And again, it's held on by just a couple of magnets, which opens up to expose the engine and the gearbox. The engine is a 3.5 liter EcoBoost twin turbo V6, making about 500 horsepower. Now you can't see much of the engine because of how far forward it is mounted towards the center of the chassis, which is good for the center of gravity. The engine is also covered up by this big air box, which feeds cool air to the turbos. I didn't even notice this scoop until I got this model. The rear wing is relatively flat shaped with a shallow angle of attack. This suggests very clean airflow towards the rear wing, and of course it's been set up for Le Mans. Also, the rear wing mounts are quite far back in relation to the rear wheels, which is a leverage advantage for rear downforce. Then, of course, there is the massive rear diffuser with eight vertical strakes, and also the completely open concept around the diffuser, which allows all that hot, turbulent air that's around the engine and gearbox to extract out the back of the car. Ford really engineered an incredible car that was unsurprisingly fast. I swear every time I watched an IMSA race, the four GTE LMs were competing for poles and wins. The four GTs were dominant at the 2016 24 Hours of Le Mans. Many people felt they sandbagged a bit during testing to avoid a balance of performance penalty as they qualified 1, 2, 4th, and 5th in class and finished the race with three cars in the top four, including the class victory. 
In the IMSA Championship, the Fords were very competitive, but fell short in 2016 and 2017, but were champions in 2018 where they won five races, including the Rolex 24 Hours of Daytona. The car had some success in the WEC, but it wasn't surprising that it fared better in North America because the team Ford Chip Ganassi was based out of the United States. The car retired after the 2019 season, but I think it must be considered a success. It won Le Mans, Daytona, and the championship, and the road car was an incredibly valuable and sought-after vehicle. If you guys want to see some more pictures, check out my Instagram. Link is in the description. And if you like the video, hit that like button, subscribe for more videos, and thanks for watching.